Mark and Michael, congratulations to the two of you. Honestly, huge fans of you both. Mark, I'm obsessed with your podcast, and I obviously loved Glow. Love seeing all of your cats on Instagram, too. And Michael, better call Saul this last season. Absolutely obsessed. My dad and I loved it. I think I've seen it like twice now. So congratulations okay. on the film. Loved it. It's really an honor just to sit here and chat with the two of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, That's yeah. Nice I One of my favorite scenes in this movie is when Sweeney and Leslie are at the carnival and they're dancing. It honest, I know this was a 19 day shoot very, very quick, but I loved that sequence. Take me back to set that day, Mark. How fun was it dancing? Did you already have those moves or did you have to learn a little bit of that choreography? I, I, when I, I don't remember knowing any of the moves, even when we did it. I, I, and, and I, could, I could not wrap my brain around it. And Andrea, like, I think used to dance. So she like was just like locked in and I'm just kicking around like an idiot. But I, I think that's the way it would have been. So, and we it didn't make me happy. Too long. That made yeah, me really and, happy. And, and we're with a bunch of line dancers. All of them were professional like Western dancers. And I'm just like, I can't, you know, I had enough to worry about just holding on to Sweeney as a person, let alone yeah. learning how to dance. So <laughs> Sweeney couldn't dance. That's how that ended up. Uh, it just made me so happy putting that together. But it was, it was the fastest. It was every day was fast. We yeah. you know, we shot this in in no time, and and we shot it on film. So everything was every second was precious. And beyond that, like we shot it uh, right during COVID, where you know people weren't even forget six feet. People weren't in anywhere near each other. So it was a great leap of faith. That scene that you called out, which is one I love um, the energy in the scene so much, but there were hundreds of extras on that there was the, all the money we had was in that scene and i'm just really proud to say that no one got sick like we didn't lose we didn't have any and that alone it, it's is it makes me happy as well in the carnival scene yeah carnival no scene. no that's yeah. that's that's awesome michael what is your favorite thing about mark as an actor I love watching Mark on screen. What was your favorite thing about working with him and the collaboration? Because it really truly seemed like a very collaborative process. Yeah, it was. It, it, it was. Uh, and each one of these characters came comes with a, a big job to bring, which is a lot of unspoken history. The, the film doesn't answer a lot of questions. It answers some, but it, it, it leaves some there on the screen. It, for me, it's what Mark brings so seemingly effortlessly and I, I i don't know it may not be but uh, is is an ability to be in the moment and to ground every moment in some experience that he has had or even uh, i don't know i can't speak for him if he's had experiences he's grounding them in or is imagining experiences he's grounding them in but every moment is grounded you know and he's um I, I, I'm, I'm not breaking new ground by saying that he you know he's he's a really funny guy so humor is often a grounding device too like if you can if you can find a way to be light with a moment and move your eyes a little funny way and suddenly i'm 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 having a kind of laughter as a response i didn't see that coming the combination of that plus what's actually happening in the scene plus what mark's bringing to it makes it feel real to me and uh, and and that's that's i think one of my favorite things about working with him i i love that well, Mark, I am obsessed with your interview style. Like your interview with Leo and Brad for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is so funny. Like just to hear Leo laugh in a, on a podcast, I was just like, this is the best interview I've ever heard. So what what is your, like, what is your number one tip for fellow interviewers just to make the conversation light and fun because you are such an amazing actor but also an amazing interviewer what is what do you have for us fellow interviewers for advice well i i don't know you, you know i to stay engaged and to say stay curious you know to, to want to know things and to not be beholden to you know an agenda you have to sort of open it up you know and i think that's the same with the acting too you got you know you've got to unfortunately a lot of people do short interviews and, you know, they have an agenda, whereas like I, I don't really, you know, uh, I get people on junkets, but we, you know, a lot of times we barely talk about whatever they're there to promote. With Brad and Leo, it was just, that was a weird situation because, you know, Brad is like a fan of mine and he would never do my show alone. And, you know, he dragged Leo into it. So Leo's like, so this is the guy, I don't know this guy. And, and Brad just was waiting for me to lose my shit somehow. But the best thing that happened, yeah, 
in that interview was that they were finding out things about each other in real time and you got to let that shit happen so like you know and i'm a guy that'll interject constantly and 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 a lot of people bother me for it but i i want i have a reason yeah so usually it's just because i want to i want to know and a lot of times i guess i'm babbling but most of the people you're going to talk to have a, a a a public narrative. They have a story that they tell over and over again, and you can hear it. You can hear the tone of it, and you can hear the repetitions of it. So, like to get them away from that, that's that's where you you find things. You know? I feel like it's a lot harder to do this quick five minute interview than do a longer form discussion, like 20, 30 minutes. And it sounds like it's kind of the same for you. Well, you can't do you can't do a real interview in five minutes, really, you, unless you. Unless you just upset somebody, like for me, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to 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 give people a sense of who the you know, and you can't hide in an hour, you know, yeah. like even if you don't answer questions, people are going to be like, oh, that's the guy that doesn't answer questions. See, you know, you're gonna, you know, yeah. Well, what you just anyway, said, Mark, is pretty true. It's pretty true about acting, I think, yeah. and you definitely nailed a lot about what 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 I think directing is about, which is stay curious, figure mm-hmm. out that you can learn things in moments you didn't expect to learn things. You know, right. and don't come in with an agenda because the moment you do that, I think, as an actor um, or as a as a director, certainly, is when you're kind of imposing all these things that may not be there. You you may be closing your eyes to the, the more interesting thing that's right there. Yes. Yeah. No, I love that. Last question for you, Mark. Sometimes. I do. Oh, we got. Yeah, I was gonna say, Mark. I love your Insta lives. I always like see people comment, being like, "Oh, who's your dream interview?" For me, dead or alive, it would be Lucille Ball. Also. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I'd like to, I, I'll take Carol Burnett. Well, there you go. Yeah. I mean, you had better call Saul. Let's, I know. Let's do it. <laughs> well, it congratulations to the two of you. This was so Thank fun you. to do this quick chat. And I can't wait for people to see this film when it's out on October 7th. Thanks, Thank Laura. you. Thank you, guys. Steven Bye. and Owen, this is an honor to chat with the two of you. Congratulations on this film. I was so moved by it. When I'm watching this film, I'm just reminded of my dad who always plays Mega Millions and he always uses my birthday and my brother's birthday to play. And I loved that Leslie won by playing her, her son's birthday. I'm curious if the two of you have ever kind of dabbled in the lottery consistently and if you do play the same numbers. Oh, and you're shaking your head, so no? No, no. The last time I played the lottery, um, I did do the same thing. I played uh, my son's birthday and uh, my wife's birthday, but not mine. But no, not a not a big lottery player. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's like it's hard. It's it's such a gamble. Um, Well, I love in the film how Leslie is essentially looking for a second chance and she meets Sweeney and he gives that to her, gives her advice, kind of, you know, helps her out in a way. And she also wants to turn things around for her son. In both of your careers so far, who has been that person or persons that have really helped you in regards to feeling down or, you know, you're looking for the next project? Who is that person for you, Stephen? I'll begin with you. Uh, it's uh, My wife is also an actor. So it's always it's always your partner, uh, yep. your spouse, who uh, if you, you had a bad day or you're feeling supremely not confident, that's a person you can actually talk to. Uh, and that's been a saving grace for me. And I think we, it's a symbiotic uh, uh, of, of both of us. If we're not having a good day, at least we have somebody to, uh, to talk about it to. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I agree with, with, with what Stephen said. Um, and, and also for me, you know, if I, if I, with some luck and, and, you know, hopefully also the people that I'm working with at, at the moment, you know, if, if things get a little, a little rough, you know, there's that family that you have on, on, on yeah. set. If, if you're lucky, that's kind of the best case scenario. I'm yeah, no, fun. I love that. It seems like the two of you had a great time on set together. Any fun behind the scenes stories you want to share or maybe happy accidents that ended up on film? Steven, I'll begin with you. <laughs> Uh, it, that, that's hard because we, it was a 19 day shoot. So there wasn't a lot of time to be even off, off camera. <laughs> like, right. It was you get so there and you're going right on. Um, I'll tell the story of, uh, there's a scene where that's being shot outside through the front window of Alice and Jenny's character. And I, 
uh, having a discussion, as it were, or I'd call it a fight. <laughs> and she, and at one point, in one, I don't know if this is in rehearsal or we actually shot it. Um, she she got so mad at me, she literally pounded me in the chest and I went over, <laughs> um, over some furniture. So um, I had the best time doing that with her because she was into the scene and I was into the scene and that was fun. There wasn't a lot of, time to kind of just chill yeah um i i do remember though at one point like it was the end of the day and we had we had, we were shooting downtown la which is always interesting um and and it was like we needed one shot of me like looking for leslie and so michael was like look we're just we're gonna get it really fast we have the camera set up just run and so i was like all right and so i just took off like down the street you know, and I was like, I guess I'll just run back. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so it was that it was that sort of shoot. Um, but 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 that can be a lot of fun as well. Yeah. No, it seems like it was a really oh, collaborative. Yeah. yeah, it seems like well, it was a great, really collaborative process. Great people, great people. Yeah. You know, a, 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 a no a hole policy on this film. I yeah. Mean, everybody was amazing, and yeah. uh, we were just thrilled to be in it. Great. Yeah. No, last question for you, Steve. And I have to ask this because I told my dad I was talking to you today. And obviously Office Space is one of his favorite films of all time. One of like the movie that like, honestly, when we, when I go over, I'm like, dad, what are we going to watch? He's like Office Space. <laughs> I'm wondering for you, how many times in your lifetime now have people come up to you with a red swing line staper asking to sign it or even a red dodgeball? I feel uh, like these two mm -hmm. roles are, you're always getting talked about, but how many times has that happened now? Um, every set that I go on, uh, I go up to the assistant director's, uh, you know, little cubicle, and they will have somewhere a, a, a box of staplers from uh, the cast and crew of whoever wants one. But I think there's not been a time when there hasn't, I haven't signed something on a set for, for people. And that that's, it's very gratifying that this little cult movie keeps being discovered by different generations and it's it's great that's the best thing about it is that it's like generational well Stephen and owen so nice to chat with you today i cannot wait for fans to see this movie when it's out october 7th congratulations again to the two of you i had so much fun chatting with you thanks so much and yeah please tell everybody we we, we love it thank you okay i definitely will it's a fantastic movie i absolutely loved it you guys are incredible in it thank you so much thank you guys thank you. bye bye-bye